Hey guys, welcome back to the Dr. Cliff AUD vlog. This is vlog number 95, and I can't believe that we are only five more vlogs away from hitting the big number 100. It's crazy to think how long these vlogs have been going on and that I've been pestering you with my, my thoughts in a relatively unstructured format. Uh, nonetheless, what I really wanna talk about today is something that um, I think has been building for quite some time at least inside of my clinic, and I can see the direction that everything is going with me providing audiologic care to my patients inside of a clinic setting. And the reason I'm bringing it up right now is because last week when I was talking about this potential that audiologists would be recognized as providers, uh, or uh, yeah, I think providers inside of Medicare and potentially having hearing aids, you know, being part of Medicare and, uh, you know, all the different audiology services being a part of Medicare. It, it kind of brought up the topic in that particular video about the potential to opt out of Medicare and not actually accept assignment. Uh, we don't know if that would even be a possibility. Heck, we don't even know if this whole Medicare thing with hearing aids and audiology services and everything is actually gonna happen. Uh, it's, it's actually each week that goes by, the likelihood of it happening, in my opinion, gets worse and worse. Um, but really, when I look at it from the perspective of this aspect of opting out, I started looking around and you know, kind of uh, looking to see what other professions have ultimately opted out of Medicare or who have just basically stopped taking Medicare. And a lot of physicians, they have the ability to opt out. It doesn't mean that they will opt out, but there are ones that do. It's not a huge percentage of these professionals who opt out. I think one thing I saw was that a lot of psychiatrists are typically the ones who opt out of Medicare more so than other professions uh, inside of the medical community. But um, it, it kind of brought up this topic about uh, no longer accepting new patients. And in the context of no longer accepting new Medicare patients in that context. But then I started thinking about it and it was like, you know, I think that me personally, professionally, that I am headed down the road of eventually not accepting any new patients inside of the clinic. And let me kind of explain my thought processes about that. Uh, but before I do, if you could do me a huge favor, click that like button, really helps out the channel, uh, supports the vlog, you know, and all of that stuff, but uh, let's move on. So let's talk about this aspect of me no longer accepting new patients at some point in the future. So right now, uh, back when I first started, we'll, we'll go back to the origin of Applied Hearing Solutions. Back in mid-2017 is when I started the clinic. Uh, hardly had any patients, obviously, when you first start up. You know, I'd only been an audiologist for eight months at that point. You know, there's a variety of, you know, non-solicitation clauses in my contract from the previous place that I worked. But even if there wasn't, I hardly had any patients at that location anyway, at my previous employer anyway. And so basically nobody followed uh, me or even looked to follow me when I moved up to open my first clinic up in Anthem. And it was a very slow growing process. I mean, I started my YouTube channel at basically the same time. And I remember that there were days where I'd have zero patients. There were weeks that I had maybe five patients. And it was a very, very slow growing type of thing. I tried a bunch of different types of marketing. None of that marketing really worked at all. I do not believe that marketing is very effective inside of the uh, world of hearing aids and audiology. I know that there are some individuals who uh, are successful with marketing inside of audiology, but the way that I practice, I mean, we don't do uh, any type of offers that would lure people in, you know, for like free hearing tests or for free trials of hearing aids, because I just don't believe in that. I feel like if I'm going to commit to treatment, to optimize treatment potential, that a patient has to commit to me at the same time. But when you're not offering them anything special to come into the door, then you then the marketing isn't as effective. And that's just the way that it is, and I accept that. But as time went on with all of the care that I was providing, um, I would have patients coming in, they would uh, accept treatment, we would end up within a week, I would be able to have hearing aids in the clinic from the manufacturer, I'd be able to initially fit them with those devices, I would have their one week follow up, their three week follow up, and their six week follow up, all within like a six, 
and a half week time frame when you look at it. And it was a very, very quick process of getting patients treated in my clinic because I just had a bunch of open time slots. I mean, it wasn't even an issue. I mean, you come into me, I could probably treat you next day uh, if I could get the hearing aids in the clinic in time. And, and it continued on that way for a year or two. And, you know, I just remember it took, it took months like eight months or something ridiculous for the first individual to come in from the YouTube content. And then it was another several months before the second person came in from the YouTube content that I create, which basically is the only marketing that I do other than um, you know, telling patients that, hey, if you have family and friends, you know, send them in, we'd be happy to take really, really good care of them. But I was able to provide really high level of care, spend a lot of time with patients. I mean, when you look at the amount of time that, that we spent with patients inside of my clinic compared to a lot of other clinics it's it's over double what most clinics are doing from a treatment standpoint and that's because we adhere to really strict standards of, of providing best practices and then basically providing individualized auditory rehabilitation to every patient instead of providing it on a like um, big group scale because some clinics do have individuals all come into their clinic to do oral rehab for you know five, 10, 15, 20 patients all at one time. But we do it on an individualized basis to make it more personal and to make it more specific and relevant to those individuals. But it takes more time to do it that way, which leads us into the problem at hand, which is we are kind of working through this aspect of now when I get a new patient who comes into the clinic, and you have to think of it this way, the, the industry standard, when you look at hearing aid dispensing, um, it is a 50% treatment rate, meaning that 50% of the individuals who come in for a consultation for their hearing loss who need hearing aids, 50% of them are who accept treatment. And the other 50% are like, you know what, I'm not ready for treatment, treatment's too expensive, I don't think that my problem's that bad, I, uh, I have some aversion to hearing aids, whatever the, the excuse is to not treat their hearing loss. Uh, regardless, 50% treatment rate is typical. And when you start looking at the treatment rates that we have inside of my clinic, at least for myself, it is upwards of 90 plus percent treatment acceptance rate, which means that almost double the amount of patients accept treatment when they come in to my clinic for a consultation. And, you know, it's, it's to the point where we had to reduce down the amount of consultations that I did a week because I was just being overloaded with all of these individuals who would want to start treatment at basically the same time. And there's just not enough time on my schedule to do that. You combine that with, we always like to see our patients inside of the clinic every um, every quarter, every six months to every quarter. So every three months to six months, we would have uh, all of our patients come back into our clinic so we can make sure that everything is functioning the way that it should. So we can provide proper detailed maintenance on devices, uh, ear cleanings, things of that nature. And, and that really bogs down the schedule, meaning that there's only so many hours in a day that patients can be seen, and you have to be able to put patients into these particular time slots and still be able to serve everybody equally without sacrificing on quality of care. And you can see where I'm going with this is that, you know, when you get a whole bunch of individuals who want to come in and get treatment, and you don't have a whole lot of time slots to be able to treat them, that becomes a problem. Now, from the standpoint of if someone has an issue, it's not that they have to wait weeks or months to come in and receive care. They just might not be able to receive care from me. They might have to come in, see an audiology assistant, see a different audiologist, come in and, and receive care from an extern that we have at our clinic, or so on and so forth. But they might not be able to see you know, me. And I often say that the biggest you know, competition that we have inside of our clinic is, is with the schedule, is with the time that we have to serve patients uh, on a very structured basis. Uh, everyone seems to think that you know, I rag on Costco or you know, my competition because we're worried that they're stealing patients from us. And the fact of the matter is, is that I have more patients than I can honestly handle uh, at this point. And, and eventually it's going to get to a point where I'm literally gonna have to say, you know what? I am not accepting any more patients. And 
I don't know exactly when this time frame is. I have a feeling that it's going to be anywhere between one and two years from now to the point where I'm probably not accepting any new patients, at least on my schedule. And it, there might be a wait list or something like that to where you know only individuals who are essentially are on this wait list would be able to come in if I have you know some attrition of patients, meaning you know. Uh, patients do pass away, patients do move to different states, so on and so forth. That could open up time on my schedule to be able to serve the, pa the other patients that I have. And, and the way that I think that I'm going to have to kind of work around this is, is that I have to make sure that the other providers that are working inside of my clinic, meaning the other audiologists that are working inside of my clinic, are upholding a very similar level of standard that I am. In fact, that is standardized inside of my clinic. We all do everything in a very similar way. You might have a different person doing it, but at least you know that you are going to get all of the best practices followed to a T. There is always some level of clinical decision making that is independent to a particular provider. But that's why we spend so much time going over different case studies uh, between the providers. So we can all kind of discuss, hey, I approach the treatment this way. How would you approach it? Or if if one of us is having you know, some issues with a treatment, we might go to each other and say, hey, I'm kind of running into an issue here, what would you do? And then there's collaboration going back and forth just to make sure that all of us are upholding a really high level of care inside of the clinic. And so even though my schedule might be blocked to accepting new patients, um, I would have other providers who I would essentially work alongside or you know, be able to offer my advice with and who ultimately would be following the same processes, procedures, and protocols that I've established and that I follow on a day-to-day -day basis in order to achieve really high-level treatment outcomes. And, you know, it's, uh, it's one of those things where it just so happens that the, the individuals who have come into this point and who are already established patients of mine, uh, the individuals who come in between now and whenever that time is that I just close off my schedule to new patients, um, those are the patients who are going to get to continue to work with me until I decide to retire, essentially. Um, there might be periods of time where there's like, a, you know, kind of like you have with insurance, like an open enrollment period. So we could potentially go and look at the schedule. We would say, okay, we are no longer accepting patients at this time. But then we kind of have this, this time period where we go and say, okay, we can uh, uh, be able to accept 20 new patients for Dr. Olson, and then we would open up the schedule to 20 new individuals at that point. And individuals who are on potentially the wait list would be notified first. And then you would have individuals who are um, who, who just happen to be lucky and called during that open enrollment period, so to speak, or that that acceptance period of where we would bring in new patients uh, to be seen by me. And then everyone else who's not willing to wait or everyone else who's like, you know, I don't even know if Dr. Olson is ever gonna accept new patients, they would still be able to come into the clinic just to be seen by a different provider. Um, I know that, that my time as a provider inside the clinic is, it's limited already, but it's going to become even a little bit more limited as time goes on. I know that I cannot burn the candle on both ends. And I feel like it, towards the end of the year, I always talk about this to where it's a situation where I spend all of my free time doing audiology, whether it's I'm actually, uh, well, you know, outside of the clinic. So I come home, I, I still do my exercise and all of that to stay healthy. But other than that, I mean, my free time is spent, you know, uh, scripting videos, researching, editing videos, you know, posting videos, responding to comments, you know, doing, you know, virtual consultations. Um, and sometimes I get to watch, you know, some Chicago Bulls basketball, Chicago Blackhawks hockey, Chicago Bears football. Um, but other than like those sports, like I can't even remember the, the last time I actually watched the TV show from beginning to end. Like Netflix, I feel like I should just cancel my Netflix subscription because I never watch Netflix because I don't have time to. If it is on, it's in the background on mute so I can get stuff done uh, for research. But I digress at this point. The, the, the point that I want to get across is that I feel like every hearing care, hearing care, I feel like every type of like medical professional or um, you know, professional in general, they, they get to a point where if the demand for their services is so high, they just can't 
continue to see the, their customers, their patients, or whoever, they just can't see more and more and more and more and more if they want to maintain a, a certain standard of care. They either have to do one of a couple things. They have to stop accepting new patients entirely and you just work with the patients that you have or the customers that you have, or you find out a way to replicate yourself, which means that you're teaching other professionals inside of your clinic, inside of your business, and you have them practice in a way that is very, very similar to how you would practice. Because ultimately, that those are the individuals who come into my clinic, the individuals who want to make sure that they're, they're going to hear their absolute best, that best practices are gonna be followed to a T, and that they're gonna have a really good experience inside of the clinic. All of those things are really, really important to the individuals who come into our clinic. And sure, there are times where um, we fail at some of those things. Uh, we like to think that it is very infrequent that we fail at those things, and we're getting better at making sure that we have all of our processes and procedures in place to make sure that that happens as infrequently as possible. And then ultimately when we do make a mistake, we have to make sure that we own up to it and, and figure out a way to solve that mistake in a way that is as beneficial to a patient as humanly possible. But those are really my thoughts on the whole thing. I think that eventually um, I'm gonna be going down from four days a week in the clinic, which I am right now, because I have Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to work on my extra content and all that for the channel which I, which I love because I ultimately I feel like that helps more people than me actually just being a single provider inside of a clinic uh, and not even that big of a clinic here in the Phoenix area. Um, there's individuals who get way, way more benefit out of my video content and, and finding a provider like in the Best Practice Pro Network and all of that. Um, and so I, I feel like that is something that is changing the, 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 the hearing loss community for the better uh, even more so than what I'm doing inside of my own clinic. But I just feel like it's in a, an eventuality to where I would go from four days a week down to three days a week and, and use that extra day or, or potentially you know, take back a weekend day for actual leisure where I do not open up my laptop to work on creating content or, or researching or reading papers or anything like that and just you know have a little bit of, of free time here as I get close to age 40 um, because really for the last you know or really since I started grad school a lot of a lot of energy and time has been committed to just audiology in general so we're talking almost 10 years at this point has been like laser focused on getting as much as I can in my head for audiology and for hearing aids and, and all of that. And I can just see that eventually it's going to have to be to where if I'm gonna keep my mental sanity, I'm gonna to have to either uh, give up something on the, on the information on the YouTube uh, route or I'm gonna to have to give up a day in the clinic and not accept as many patients, but then replace me with another provider who is going to uphold the same standard, which, you know, one thing I've, I've learned over the past couple of months or really over a year now is that individuals, patients uh, who call up our clinic and who want to come in and see me, it's not that they want to see me necessarily. Now, some of them, they're like, no, I have to see Dr. Olson and that's that I'm not going to see anyone else other than him. But there's a lot of individuals who call up and we give them the option. It's like, hey, we have this other fantastic doctor who works right alongside Dr. Olson. They discuss uh, different uh, cases together. They follow the same best practice protocols. They, they do everything in a very, very similar way. And would you be willing to see this other provider? And a lot of the time they're like, you know what? Yes, because I would rather go in and see that provider now than wait three weeks, four weeks to see Dr. Olson. And then on top of that, when they see, if they were to come in and see me and they decide to pursue treatment, sometimes we're booking them two months out before we can even fit them with hearing aids, which I know sounds ridiculous, but that just tells you how packed my schedule is already. Um, it's not always that way. Sometimes it's you know within two weeks that we can get someone fit on my schedule. It just depends on what a patient can actually swing and make happen. Um, but we have a lot of requirements from patients who come into the clinic. They have to come in for four, 
fitting appointments, right? Initial fitting, one, three, and six week follow-up. Um, individuals who fly in from different states, they have to come in for at least their first two, their, their fitting and their one week follow-up. Uh, the, the three and six week follow-up can be done virtually, but it still takes up the same amount of time on my calendar. So it's a, it's a situation where it is what it is. I would rather reduce the amount of patients that I see but uphold a really high quality of care than switch it into a, you know what, I'm gonna reduce the quality of care because I've got all these people who are willing to pay me anyway. I'm just not willing to do that because at the end of the day, I wanna make sure that I can put my head on my pillow and fall asleep nice and easily even though I have this tinnitus in my right ear that can sometimes keep me awake if I don't, uh, of course, mask it really well with a fan or with my snooze device. But I'm getting too far off track. That is really what I wanted to talk about today. Uh, let me know your thoughts on the whole thing. I mean, I know it seems ridiculous that I've only been practicing audiology really for what, five, almost, almost going on six years at this point, and I'm already talking about not accepting any new patients, um, but I feel like just with the amount of time that I spend and the amount of demand of individuals wanting to come in and get services from me at my clinic, I just don't see any other way around it unless you guys see uh, a better way of going about it. So that is all I really wanna say for today, guys. I really appreciate you hanging on with me. As always, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. If you've not yet subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to it so you make sure that you don't miss any of my newly released videos. And as always, I will see you next week.